Hi, and welcome to Boise State University in the community. I'm your host, Samantha Sharp, and with me on the show tonight is Boise State's Director of the Human Performance Lab, Dr. Sean Simonson. How are Hi. you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. All right, let's just launch into things. First of all, can you tell me what the Human Performance Lab is? The Human Performance Laboratory, or the HPL as we often call it, is an exercise physiology laboratory. And exercise physiology is the study of what allows us to be physically active and what happens when we are physically active, both acutely and chronically. And in the HPL, we educate students about exercise physiology. We evaluate human performance or physiological responses to physical activity. We then try to enhance that performance. And we do research and explore what's going on and see if we can learn new things about how to help humans do things better. Okay. Can you tell me a little bit more about your involvement in this lab? As you said, I'm the director of the Human Performance mm -hmm. Lab. And what that means is that I get all the fun stuff of ordering equipment, making sure things are fixed, mm -hmm. scheduling, making sure the lab runs, and that we have the materials that we need to teach students and do research. Okay. And do you have um, anyone helping you with that? Yeah, we've got great graduate assistants. Every year we have uh, two graduate assistants that work in the Human Performance Laboratory. Mm -hmm. And they help with all that process and they do most of the testing and I try to get them involved as much as I can so that they learn as much as they, they possibly can about yeah. running a lab. Mm -hmm. And what does a day in the lab look like? Well, usually we start the day with testing. Okay. Uh, we have folks from the community come in and do different tests, body composition testing, uh, maximal exercise, anaerobic power, those types of things. Mm -hmm. And we usually have got a couple of appointments that do that. And we also will have classes come in. We have two classes currently using the laboratory. Mm -hmm. And then we'll also do research. Right now we have a study going where we have students using our anti-gravity treadmill, the Alter-G, mm -hmm. to help older adults develop power and reduce fall risk. Okay. And so a lot of the time in the lab, he's got folks in on the equipment doing that. Okay, and you guys are located on the first floor of the Norco building, correct? Yes. And you, but you always didn't um, operate there, right? You guys moved? No, this is a new space for okay. us. Okay, so can you tell me more about why you moved? Okay, well, if you had seen our old space, you would understand why. Mm -hmm. We've been in Bronco Gym for 30-some years wow. in the basement in the old women's locker room with these huge concrete columns in the middle of the space, and we had all of our equipment crammed in plus a classroom. And because we do work with the community, it was not a very attractive environment. It didn't put a very good face on Boise State. Okay. And so when we moved to the College of Health Sciences, we had some new resources available. And the dean, uh, Tim Dunnigan, said, I've got this space that we can use. So he made it happen. And we moved to Norco so that we're more visible. It's a better learning environment for students. Mm -hmm. And it puts a better face on the lab for the community. OK, you've mentioned some of the services and machines mm -hmm. that you have. Are there any other ones that really appeal to the students and community? Well, students like the lab. It's, I think it's one of the most fun rooms on campus because they get to come in and they get to try the equipment and they get to use mm -hmm. themselves as the guinea pig. So they really like that. Um, and some of the things that we do that we also offer to the community are maximal oxygen consumption testing. Mm -hmm. And that's beneficial for athletes that are endurance athletes and they can figure out what their maximum capacity is, and we can help them then learn how to use that, mm -hmm. enhance it better. We also offer body composition testing. Mm -hmm. And what we have that's unique that other places in the community don't have is hydrostatic or underwater testing and the bod pod, which is air displacement. And we can determine what percentage of somebody's body fat is, or body composition is due to fat using those two techniques, and they're very accurate. So people wow. that want to lose weight or manage their body fat find that information useful. We also do strength, anaerobic power, flexibility testing, yeah. lots of different things that we can do for folks. That's cool. So what has the response been from students and the community since you've moved? Well, the students love it. They like mm -hmm. the nice, clean space, mm -hmm. the uh, visibility. It's funny because it, since it's a research space, we have to have it so that it can be private. But because we put it in the middle of the Norco, we put glass walls around it so the people could see what was going on. Mm -hmm. So we have shades on the windows so we can draw them during research if our participants want to remain anonymous. Okay. And we ask the students, would you like us to draw shades during class? And their response is, no, we want people to see what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So they really like that aspect of it. 
they like the, the more space so they can actually try things and get more familiar with the equipment. But I think the biggest thing that's really happened is our testing that we do for the community has increased significantly mm -hmm. because we're more visible people know more about us and it's a more comfortable environment. So our testing has doubled in just a couple of months since we opened up in the new space. Wow. Mm -hmm. And when did you guys open? Uh, November. Okay, of 2015. Yep. That's awesome. Um, has this been the response that you've wanted to see or is there you know, even a bigger response that you've been hoping for? Now this is what I expected and it will continue to grow. Mm -hmm. um, we expect that you know, in January we always have more folks come in because that's when we have our New Year's resolutions to get into better physical shape. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people come in for testing to find that out. But we found that um, we're getting more of that and it's continued on. So we're getting a, a good response. It's about what we expected and we expect it to continue to grow, especially with things like this that mm -hmm. promote the lab and what we can do. Speaking of promoting the lab, um, have you guys put in any efforts to advertise it more in the community? We have not at this point. Uh, we have brochures and flyers that we have available, but we haven't made a, a concentrated effort to make that happen. I have been spending more time on campus, talking to different uh, entities on campus, mm -hmm. telling them more about the lab, doing things like this, so that folks know that we're uh, around. Um, and we're trying to do some interesting marketing on the outside of the facility with signage to draw more attention to it. Okay. Um, as we grow, we'll look at doing more advertising in the community, getting people to know more about it. Like what? Well, we're trying to establish relationships with other agencies. Uh, for example, within the university, we're working with a brand new relationship that we're working on establishing is with athletics and the dietitian to help uh, folks manage their energy intake and their body composition in relation to their athletic performance. Mm -hmm. We're also talking to different fitness facilities in the community so that we can offer testing to their customers to okay. improve the outcomes mm -hmm. of their use of their fitness facility. So what kind of people have been using this lab the most? Like people from the community, students? Um... Our biggest use are students coming in for class. Okay. That's by far our biggest. Our second is probably a toss up between research and the community coming in for testing. Um, we've seen a lot of folks, the biggest seller of our, communi of our community testing is body composition. Mm -hmm. People want to know what their body fat really is and be able to make progress with that. The next biggest seller for the community is metabolic testing. We can measure somebody's metabolic rate mm -hmm. at rest, and so then they can more accurately prescribe diet and exercise to manage their body weight. We're seeing more performance testing from the community as well as they learn more about what we can do. So how has the new lab increased you know, performance of the community and the learning of kinesiology students? I think the students are more excited about this new mm -hmm. space. It, it's opposed to walking into a dungeon-like space. Mm -hmm. They're now walking into a brightly lit, clean, open space. I think that's more inviting. It improves their attitude, it improves their enthusiasm. So when students are more enthusiastic, they learn more. And that's really the critical thing. And that same thing works for the community, they see this nice space, so they're more inclined to come in and try it out. Mm -hmm. And we're offering a better service because they're more comfortable and they're there, so they're more likely to return and get that repeated measure, which really shows them the progress that they should be making. So do they have the option to return to the lab to help or even be hired afterwards? We do internships frequently in the lab, mm -hmm. so we do have a lot of students that come in and do their uh, internship during their senior year. We have three students doing that currently now. But then we also have students that come in and just help on specific research projects. Um, I think we have two or three now that are just helping on a particular research project and not actually doing an inter internship. Mm -hmm. So they can come in. Um, we do not have actual uh, employees within the lab other than the graduate assistants. Mm -hmm. And some of our graduate assistants have been students returning uh, to work on their graduate degree after they've completed their bachelor's. Okay. And what do you think is the most important thing that the lab has to offer? Whether it's to students or the community or even faculty or the school? That's a good question. I think the most important thing that we offer to students is the experience to really try what they're learning. And one of the reasons, and I tell students this frequently, one of the reasons why I chose exercise physiology 
as a career and as an area to focus on was because I get to try things on myself. Mm -hmm. I always knew that I was going to go into some aspect of human anatomy or research. But the thing that appealed to me about exercise physiology was I got to be a subject and I got to play in all the equipment mm -hmm. and see how this stuff actually worked personally. Mm -hmm. I think that's what really appeals to students and really is a great thing for students is they get to get on the equipment, not only as a technician, but as a participant. So they really learn what's happening personally as well as intellectually. I think that's the biggest thing. And for the community, I think, and the reason why people should come and get tested is this shows them concrete evidence that what they're doing is either working or not working. And we can then help them decide what the next step is to make that continued improvement that they want to see. Mm -hmm. OK, um, what kind of things happen when something goes wrong in the lab? Who's responsible? What, you know, if something breaks down, then what happens with that? Then I get an email or a phone call, and I get to go over and see what's going on. Mm -hmm. The uh, unique thing about exercise physiology labs is most of the equipment is not something that you're going to find somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So we have to figure out a way to fix it ourselves. And what often ends up happening is we end up calling the manufacturer and doing the repair ourselves with the manufacturer on the phone, mm -hmm. telling us how to do it. Um, so I've gotten very good at repairing equipment. Uh, but uh, fortunately, that's not a, a common occurrence. Mm -hmm. We do have folks in the community that we call. For example, um, Idaho Sports Medicine Institute donated some equipment to us. Mm -hmm. And they've been very helpful when we've had issues with operator error or maintaining the equipment. They send over their exercise physiologist, and he helps us out to keep things running. Well, that's awesome. Um, how does the funding work for the lab, and what, what's the path of money, if I'm allowed to ask? Okay. Uh, like many labs on campus, we really do not have a lot of external funding available. Mm -hmm. So we do a couple of things. One, we, we do have a small budget that comes from the department, but we try to augment that. And the main reason, or the main way we augment that is with our testing services. OK. Mm -hmm. And we, that's w why we do charge for those services instead of giving them away, is we've got to keep the lab running. And we're not allowed to make a profit, so we only charge what it actually costs to do the service and to maintain the equipment. And what's kind of the price range for the, what are the most popular tests that you guys administrate? The most popular tests are body composition. Mm -hmm. And those are around, depending upon the test, 30 to $35 for a mm -hmm. test. The most expensive would be a lactate threshold. And a lactate threshold is when we're doing intense exercise, our body starts to produce lactic acid because of the rapid energy production. And that lactic acid accumulates and the hydrogen that comes off of it starts to limit performance. Mm -hmm. And so that threshold point is where that performance is limited because we've produced so much and we're not clearing it. Mm -hmm. So at an endurance athlete, if they know where that threshold is, they race, the idea is to race at that, just below that threshold. Mm -hmm. And so we have folks come in to find out what that is. It's a very intense test as far as equipment and materials. So that's our most expensive, and I believe it's $135, which if you compare it to other facilities is a real bargain, because most places are gonna charge more than 200 for that. So is Boise State um, the main place to get these tests? tests done or is it you know are these tests popular around the Boise area we're in a unique environment in Boise and that we're a small enough community that we don't have a lot of facilities available to do this kind of testing mm -hmm. so most of the testing that we do we are the only opportunity and we're the as far as I know we're the only hydrostatic tank or the only place that can do underwater weighing and I believe we're also the only place with the bod pod huh. there are other places that can do the maximal exercise testing the lactate threshold um, but we are a more economical choice mm -hmm. um, for that than the few other places that do it. Well, have you ever thought about raising prices since you're the kind of only place in the area? Well, I would love to, but because we're a state entity, we can't actually make a profit. Uh, it's okay. part of the, uh, the state rules governing our use. So what we actually charge is what it costs us to do the, to do the test. Uh, okay. And we do build in a little bit of a cushion to pay for equipment repairs and that type of thing. But that $135 is what it costs us to do the test. That's awesome. So I've got one last question for okay. you. Looking a little bit more into the future, what are the plans 
are there any plans for the Human Performance Lab and its growth? Well, we'd like to continue growing services so that we continue to offer more things for students to do. Mm. Um, in the fall, we'll have classes uh, in the, more classes in there than we do currently. And we'd like to continue doing the research and the service that we do for folks. Um, we're trying to grow things, and it's like any other facility. We want to see more use mm -hmm. through marketing, through letting folks know about it, through letting people know that what we can do. We've done some programs with uh, local agencies. For example, we did a research project with the Boise Fire Department. We'd like to do more things like that um, and do testing to help other agencies in the state learn more about how to improve the performance or safety of their employees and, their, and meet their goals for their agency. Well, thank you so much for telling us um, more about the Human Performance Lab. Do you have anything else that you want to add? Or anything that you want to let people know? Yeah, it's a, the most fun place on campus. At least, I may be biased a little bit. But it is the most fun place on campus. Come play with our toys with us. Yeah, we'll definitely check out your services. Well, thank you so much for being here and telling us more about the lab. I'm sure, hopefully, some people will see this and come take your tests. Well, that's all the time that we have. I'm your host, Samantha Sharp, and thank you for tuning in to Boise State University in the community.